So back in October, I received a message from someone looking for some run coaching. I typically do individualized workouts for people or some sort of accountability or a blend of the two. So making sure they stick to what they said they were going to do, following through, making that progress. This I found out was a very different case actually. This woman was coming back from having a very serious respiratory illness. It first happened back in June of last year, so we aren't even to the year mark of her having this big problem come up. She was someone who used to be able to run 20 miles no problem, lots of marathons under her belt, and now being at the point when she messaged me of barely being able to get through 10 or 15 minutes without really heavy breathing or almost feeling faint. This brings me to the point of today's video and the good news of that story, which is that this woman is now running for over an hour, no problems with her breathing. And so what I'm gonna to reveal to you guys in this video is the five top things we've focused on in these past three months, getting her back to where she was, and then of course building from there. Our goal is to have her back in her first half marathon this coming year, and I have no doubt we'll get there. Let's jump into tip one. An important disclaimer here, guys, no, I am not a doctor, no, I'm not a medical professional. I'm using all my experience with my clients and my personal experience to give you these tips that I have seen work. If you're dealing with any sort of illness, whether it's serious like my client had, or something more mild, or maybe just a hiatus from working out and now you're working back into it, make sure that you do clear things with your doctor to make sure that you can apply these tips, apply a training plan without worrying about something worse happening to you. Tip number one, you are not the runner that you were before. Before we get all emotional about that fact or decide if it's good or bad, it is what it is. So what I encourage you guys to do, take the shame, disappointment, comparison of the, how it used to be with now out of the equation and instead focus on building a plan that actually matches where you're starting from. Your 100% is different now. You may have been able to run 10 miles no problem every other day before. Well, now you can't. You're going 20 minutes and you're very much out of breath and your speed feels unmanageable. Maybe your legs are burning from the very first step of your run. That's where we're starting from. So your plan, what the week looks like needs to match that. Otherwise, each day that you go for that run expecting things to be different, you're gonna keep being let down by yourself because you're not there. You can't actually accomplish this yet. In order to get back to that place, we have to build slowly, we have to be consistent. The only way to be consistent is to lay out workouts in the week that we actually can accomplish. And the fact that you're already watching this video tells me you are taking action towards the future. So do not distract yourself with the past. Second point today is that it's now gonna take way more energy to do way less work. It is the reality once again, the sooner we face it, the quicker we can make progress. So my tip here in number two is to use all of your resources. Great nutrition, really focused hydration, and tons of sleep will give you those extra superpowers for higher level of performance, which will again, boost your confidence as you complete the workouts and build them up to more mileage. If we don't use these things, out of pride, out of the fact that maybe before this illness or before this setback or break, we weren't using any nutrition or any hydration in a 10 mile run. You're not weak for needing it now. In fact, it boosts you to feel better and do better in your workout. So prioritizing that and really focusing on it just as much as you focus on your gear, your shoes, your number of miles and the time out there, it really will help you. When it comes to adjusting our training volume, my best tip is to take a previous plan that you've had a layout of workouts that you enjoyed and cut everything in half, even if it seems ridiculously small in volume. When we do this, we give ourselves the ability to add from there. That is way healthier on our psyche than not being able to do what we said we were going to do. So even if you had a normal three mile run as your short run and now it's gonna be a mile and a half, maybe all walking, you can do that and say, okay, I feel okay, I'm gonna add five minutes to this. That's gonna do wonders on your confidence versus the other way around, you go out for three, you barely make it past two. Another thing we've seen work really well for my client is adding nutrition to every single workout no matter the length of time. I know this seems a little silly to go out for a 30 minute run or a 30 minute strength workout and bring a gel with you to have 15 minutes in. But the reason we see it work is that when you are sedentary for so long, whether it's because of illness or just taking that break and being more stagnant, your body isn't used to getting through the level of activity that you're now doing and sustaining that energy. So you might have got really good at running fasted in the mornings back when you were healthy, 
but now it's taking a lot more effort. So it seems a little ridiculous. Every 20 to 30 minutes, I want you guys to have a couple bites of food, even on the short workouts, even if you're just walking. It's gonna create a more streamlined version of yourself so you're not feeling the effects of that activity so harshly. Tip number three, our main focus in training right now needs to be getting that heart rate up and refinding our level of deep breathing at the elevated heart rate. So what I recommend for this is two things. Number one, interval training. Doesn't need to be anything crazy, just some sort of speed and or hill work that's done in short increments where you push yourself and bring it back down. Push yourself, bring it back down. What this does in short little increments of time forces you to refamiliarize yourself with that higher heart rate, that burning lung sensation, but giving you the time to recover and not being there so long that it scares you or knocks you out. The second thing we have to do is now rebuild that aerobic base. Here's the easiest way to do that. On top of the training plan you've already laid out, I want you guys to add a 30 minute walk to that. Can be on its own day, can be in addition to a workout you're already doing on that day. Doesn't need to be crazy fast, but start with 30 minutes. This is going to force you to be at that elevated heart rate relative to being sedentary, but nowhere near the heart rate when you're doing that interval work. This is gonna be that lower one, but forcing you to learn again how to breathe when the heart rate is just a little bit higher. We can work on the deep diaphragm breaths way easier when we're in that walk, because of course we're not exerting as much. So between the walk going on, the rest of our training plan and that interval work we've now included as well at least once a week, twice would be awesome, maybe one tempo, one hill. All that together is gonna elevate all of your aerobic ability. You're gonna be more athletic by blending all these things together. So we don't need to go nuts, but we do need to work in the different heart rate zones in manageable amounts of time here in the beginning. Tip number four, get your legs back. Strong legs will make this whole process way faster, way more enjoyable. We all know that feeling of our burning quads mid run. That's because our legs need so much oxygen to function. Again, our aerobic base is not back yet. So as we rebuild that, adding some muscle to our legs, some defense against everything going on against us right now, one will keep us from getting injured, two will just make the stamina of our body much stronger. I recommend starting with body weight movements in the gym. You do not need to be lifting heavy here. Just getting those reps in to rebuild a little muscle around. Start with three to five sets, 12 to 15 reps, body weight only, lunges, squats, maybe a wall sit here and there, and work on just a little bit of supplemental strength around your other training. Tip number five, use this setback to rebuild your bucket list, what you think might be possible for yourself in this life. I don't just mean in fitness either. We all know the phrase, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Unfortunately in life, these low moments, these really big setbacks are the things that give us the perspective, shake us to stop taking things for granted. Take my client for example, used to get up every single day, run, it was part of her identity, who she was, what made her feel strong. Suddenly it was taken away. What I tell her every single time we talk, this is the opportunity to crack open the bucket list, erase everything and start over. This is because when we get that perspective and the things we were routine about and we always expected to be there, when they're taken away, it makes us realize that anything's possible in a negative light at first, but then hopefully in a positive light. We get in a really habitual state of living. We do the same thing over and over. We don't really branch out until something crazy out of nowhere happens. In that case, I encourage all of you guys to think about what do you really actually want to do? What's something that scares the shit out of you? You never thought about running an ultra. You never thought maybe even about running a marathon, only half marathons. This might be the opportunity to say in this time around, my fresh slate, I'm rebuilding my training from here. I'm actually gonna do it way better, come out way stronger on the other side. My mind is now an additional tool that I have to get through whatever hard thing I sign up for. Again, I'm talking about fitness here, but we can be talking about life as well. Expand the possibilities of things you want to try now based on the fact that we know nothing in life is guaranteed. Guys, I hope you really enjoyed this video. I hope it helped you. Again, send it to somebody that you think might need it. I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.